Hi, I'm Dan Waters and I grow mushrooms at home. I'm going to show you today the system that I'm using. This is the first video uh, that I've done on, on my, uh, my mushroom system. So what I use here is uh, a, an old display fridge and a, an old chest freezer. Uh, most of the stuff that you see here I got for free. A lot of the piping I had to pay for and the tools to, uh, to make bring it all together. Um, cost money so it hasn't been without a small investment as I said I try and spend as little money on a, a little venture like this and, and just to test it and see uh, how far I can get with with the idea that I've got so a lot of people uh, do want to grow want to use these these display fridges as fruiting rooms um, I don't know that because around Perth I've had a lot of people a lot of interest just locally uh, in what I'm doing and that's the reason for, for making this video as well. Um, so the, the, I did start with the, the display fridge um, with a small humidifier and this evaporative cooler, uh, blowing air, blowing humidified air into the chamber and, and bumping that up with a small humidifier. But um, it, it uh, wasn't great. There was too many variables, and there were some issues with the with the display fridge as well. Trying to um, trying to get the uh, reduce keep the CO2 down low enough with that kind of system, um, but also just the variability of temperature was was affecting the system quite a lot. And what I realise now is the the reason why the the outside temperature was affecting the system so much is these dis display fridges aren't as well insulated as you might think they are. The, the glass in particular is a, a massive issue, particularly on hot days. So um, you can see what I've done here to lessen the loss of, of energy out of the display fridge is put insulation over the glass. So we'll go in and have a closer look at that insulation. Um, this, is, this is an air cell uh, material. Uh, so you've got like a Kingspan Permicav and you've got a lot of different products uh, with this, uh, this air cell type of arrangement. What it is, it's just foil foam uh, on the front. If I can get that to focus. Um, it's foil faced on the front and it's got a foam uh, inner core uh, that, uh, that prov provides the insulation. This is around about six mil thick, this stuff. So it's not a, a huge um, rating of insulation, but on top of that, that six mil thickness, it all ha also has an air cavity between the material, and that, that cavity root thickness is really determined by this this um, this piece of uh, you know, insulation that I've used for, for as a batten for gluing this stuff on. So I've also put it put this um, foam strip around the outside. It was the first thing I, I stuck on just to kind of frame the glass and, and separate the aluminium from the uh, the insulation. Uh, as a thermal break. Um, so put that on, put these battens on, glued them on with, uh, with liquid nails, and then again liquid nailed uh, all the, uh, the insulation on. That was just done yesterday. Um, you can see one door is completely covered. Okay, and this door has a little bit of a viewing panel in it, and that's, uh, that's more for me, because uh, I do like to look in and see what's going on without having to open up the fridge and lose the temperature and humidity. But I think this is going to have to go because I can feel that the, the, the temperature of this is really warm. It's about 30 degrees today and, uh, and the, the glass really does heat up. And as I said before, this is the, probably the, the weakest point with the display fridges is the glass. And even though there's two layers of glass, uh, the heat at uh, you know, 30, 40 degree days still draws the, uh, you know, it taxes the system way too much. So anyway, we've got that covered up now and I'm already seeing a, uh, a three degree improvement in the exhaust temperature. All right, so speaking of the exhaust, we'll take you to all this, this pipe work here. Okay, between the, the, uh, the preconditioning chamber that I've got here, the old chest freezer, picked up this chest freezer for, for free. Uh, the lid on it was buggered. They didn't think it was working too well as a chest freezer, but I could tell that's because the lid was not doing its job. I was going to keep it as an operating chest freezer, but then when I started to drill holes in it and put the air conditioning unit, which you can just see at the back there, I cut up a hole, cut up in a hole to put that, that air conditioning unit in it, and all the, the coils for the 
freezer fluid or gas or whatever it was were actually running through the body of this chest freezer and I cut through them. So I, I ruined my chance of using this chest freezer as a, a cooling unit. But anyway, I had the idea of putting the air conditioner in there. I needed the air conditioner in there for... That was the original idea, and that's what you do with these preconditioning rooms. That's what I've seen online with people like Eric Myers. Myers Mushrooms. So um, the fact that I lost the ability to cool was a little bit sad, but I, I had a different plan. Anyway, so um, this preconditioning chamber has several pipes coming and going from it, two pipes coming and going from it. Uh, you've got your air intake here. Okay, that's the bigger pipe, that's the air intake, so that's the warm air coming in. And that comes in from up here, so you can see the opening in this pipe here. At the back of the pipe, back in the throat of that pipe, you can see there's some metal... Let's see if you can get a shot of that. There's some metal... There it is. Tubes. These are hollow metal tubes. Stainless steel. We've got those for a slab of beer uh, from Bell Australian WA. They've closed down now. Um, so what happens is that the fresh air is taken in here and those, those steel tubes okay, are blocked off at one end inside that pipe. You can't see it. Well, actually, maybe you can see it from up the top here. Here we go. So you can see these are the metal tubes and there's, there's, a, there's a cap, right? At the top, you're looking at the top right now. There's a cap at those metal tubes and there's a cap at the base of those metal tubes as well. In between that, those two caps, fresh air flows in and, and out. Let's come back and have a better look at that. So in and out, all right? And it blows over those metal tubes. Okay, those metal tubes are, uh, that inside those metal tubes is the dirty air that's being exhausted from uh, from the fruiting chamber and so that, that that air is being exhausted through these smaller pipes okay and my issue right now is that um, is that I can't really control this camera very well but my issue is that um, the exhaust isn't working as well as I thought it would map that heat exchange those metal tubes at the top the heat exchange isn't working as well as I thought it, it, it would I think one of the reasons for that is that I don't have enough insulation on these pipes. So I've got to get those better insulated. Hopefully I'll see uh, a, a gain of a couple of degrees, uh, a drop of a couple of degrees in temperature going into those uh, those cooling tubes at the top. Anyway, so the, the, that's where the fr fresh air comes in through this larger pipe. It's, got, it's drawn into the, uh, the preconditioning chamber where the air conditioner cools it down to about 18 degrees. And in here as well, I've got a, a humidifier tote with, uh, with I think it's a, an American term, a tote. Uh, but basically it's a, uh, it's a tub, it's a plastic tub. I've got a black plastic tub with a clear lid in there. And it's full of water. I've got two uh, humidifiers in there. My arm's getting sore, I've got to change hands. Um, so I've got two humidifiers in my, in my black plastic tub down here. And, uh, and the air from the air conditioned air at about 18 degrees, it's blown into the, the plastic tub where the humidifiers humidify the air and then that air is pushed up into this tube, this smaller tube here, PVC tube, which is insulated and not insulated well enough, might I add. I need to do this better as well because I'm touching this and it's cold in places, All right? So that cold humidified air, fresh air, uh, comes up and into the fruiting chamber. All right, so this is where it comes through into the fruiting chamber. You can see the pipe, the hole on this side here. Okay, that's coming through there at about 18 to 22 degrees. And uh, that's, most of the time that's humidified. I've got the humidifiers on a timer, so sometimes it switches off. It can get a bit too moist in here and the mushrooms can go a bit uh, brown and soggy. So, um, so again, the amount of humidity coming into the fruiting chamber does need to be adjusted as well. All right, so this is the fruiting chamber. So I'll stand back a little bit so you can see, uh, maybe see a bit more. Okay, so you can, you can see I've got one shelf in there. I've got more shelves to come. I've got some buckets of substrate, uh, colonized substrate on the bottom there. I'm waiting for those to, to pin. I'll show you the other side. Here you can see uh, you can see those uh, these little plastic 
PVC caps that I've got here. This is what's going to be holding up this shelving. You can see an example of this shelving here. This is a stainless steel rod, shelf rod, 19 mil, um, cut to, to length to fit into the chamber and uh, clipped into place into these PVC tubes. I've done it so I can remove the PVC tube, the um, stainless steel tubes and clean it. Um, I can clean it while it's here, but I can also remove it and clean it if necessary. I clean inside the tubes because they are hollow. And um, yeah, and that's it. I've got a lot more shelving to go in. So I'm gonna have three rows of shelving, or four, including the, the base down there. Uh, there's 400 mil gap between the base and the next shelf. So that allows the fruit to, the, the mushroom to grow up out of the bucket without touching the, the shelf above it. So then I'll have the base uh, and then three other shelves. The, the other one is going to be going in here. I don't have enough rod to do that at this stage. I didn't want to spend the extra money, so I, um, I just bought enough for, for two shelves at this stage. And I want to make sure I can get these fruiting in this condition on these shelves before spending a little bit more money. Not that it's much. But um, so that's, that's the fruiting chamber there. Um, as you can see, um, I don't know if you can see, but these doors, one of the issues with the, the doors is they don't really seal terribly well. You know, there's nothing keeping this closed. But I can push on there and they do bounce a little bit. I actually saw last night when it, it had cooled down a bit that the humidity, the, 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 um, the, the fog from the humidifier and the humidity coming out was, was coming out of this crack in the door. So I need to seal that or get some, some sort of pressure on those doors to keep those closed because I'm definitely losing, uh, I'm losing um, some of the cold through, through that gap. So I've got to get some pressure on these doors to keep these closed and, and uh, make sure that all the cold air is exhausting where it should do in the, those exhaust tubes so that it's coming up into the, uh, the heat exchange unit and cooling that down as much as possible. So that's my, my setup. I hope that gives you a, a nice idea of what I'm doing here. It's, uh, it's a bit messy, there's a bit more work to do and, um, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Take care.